I'm here today with one of the biggest, if not the biggest, person in house music. Um, starting from the top because David Morales comes with a history, born and bred in the ghetto streets of Brooklyn. And I was hoping today he'd come in a verse because he's got the biggest biceps. <laughs> I do not. You do, you no, do. No, you're That's bigger you than do. I am. Right, I mean, obviously you were brought up in Brooklyn. Was it, I mean, it was a tough life. Did it, did it change your outlook on life? It, it definitely makes you aware of what's going on, you know, because um, to me everything sort of like relates to each other. And mm. So it definitely helped me a lot in sort of like, I guess, making me a, a tougher, harder person. How long ago did you start DJing? When... I've been a bedroom DJ since I'm um, 13 years old. 13 years old. And um, where was the first place that you got booked to play? When I started really doing clubs, there was this uh, West Indian DJ, right. and he used to play a lot of Trinidadian stuff, you know, a lot of soca and Calypso. And I would play the Americans, you know, it was all soul stuff, the dance right. music, so I would do the English set. Probably Chic, Good Times, and Love Thing, My First Choice, and things like that. And, uh, you know, the guy would give me a couple of dollars, which, you know, was no big deal. And I would always go to his shop, he had an electronic shop, and he always had his console set up. And, you know, he always enjoyed when I came up and just, you know, play some records. So those were the first gigs. And uh, when I got my first gig as a DJ in the club, was probably I was like 19 years old, and um, it was New Year's Eve. The other DJ didn't show up, and he called me up. And a couple of months down the line after that, I started my own thing. I mm -hmm. played for, I did some girls' party in Brooklyn, and only my friends turned, turned out. out yeah. So I approached the owners and asked them, let me do a party on my own. And that was started out as once every couple of months to once a month, developed into once every week kind of thing. And all I wanted to do was play records. Mm -hmm. So at first I would hire hosts, which were really promoters now. Yeah. And I just wanted to play records, but they were always giving me a hard time about paying me money. And it was only just, you know, I'd get them the whole door. And all yeah. I wanted was a salary. And then my first New York club was a Paradise Garage. That was the ultimate break. Yeah. Because that was like the mecca of clubs in the world. And to get an, have an opportunity to play there was, was unheard of, you know. That was, that was like graduating from high school to college, you know. And as a DJ, I would play my stuff first, right off, fresh off the reel. I'd play it in the club, and then I'm on to the next project, you know what I mean? Yeah. I used to go through my records before they even came out. And some of them would come out to two, three, four, five, six months on line. I'd be like, oh, I'm over this record, my God. And then, I, then I'd have <laughs> to and then I'd have to bring it back out because yeah. it's a big record now. But you know, I um I've done a lot of records. Um I, I, I Talking feel... about a lot of records, sorry, I'm gonna have to stop you there, right? This this um this come through and I thought I was gonna run out of fax paper because I have never seen something like this. This is how many um tracks Mr. Morales has actually produced and remixed. Can you see that? One page, two page, three page, four page. Basically, there's eight pages here. A lot it, of work in the studio. A lot of work. I mean, how long did it take? It's like, that is so impressive. It le almost 11 years. 11 years. And I think a lot of people have to understand that now is because of, I mean, people as myself and people like Frankie and, mm -hmm. and the Todd Terry's, you know, that we've been out here for a lot of years and it's what we have made it where now DJs can now look forward to a career. Yeah. The kids now can say, you know, I, w I, I want to be a DJ. Yeah. And then you can, there's automatically a progression now to be a record producer. But you got to remember that today mixing has gone far away from what it was mm. 10, 15 years ago. You know, in the old days, you had to remix the song. That's what it was about, you know. And it's about taking that song to another place. Now it's kind of you just ask somebody, just give me a track. You know, that has nothing to do with the song. It could be a whole right. different format. Yeah, you, you know? I mean, you've remixed tracks from, I mean, diversity of music from like Spice Girls to, to Alexandra Neal, to Mariah Carey. I mean, how do you actually choose? Do, do these people approach you or? Yeah, usually, you, you know, companies approach you and, you know, I always ask to listen to it. And, you know, some things are favors, you know, yeah. I'm not going to lie about that, you know, where you, well, well, you have a relationship yeah. with people, you know. At the end of the day, as a remixer, you're in the business to remix a record. How long does it actually take? It can take anywhere from an average of three days, four days. Two weeks. It depends how many... T <laughs> well, it depends how long you work. Yeah. You know, me, I, I usually do like 20-hour shifts. So, really? You know, <laughs> you know, 
I have no. Yeah, I, I don't look at holidays or anything like that. To me, it's just another day. So what makes you happy then? What makes me happy? What I mean, makes I go you shopping. Happy? <laughs> and you go shopping. No, uh, you know, watching people get off on the music I make, the music I play. In your life, have you ever been surrounded by loads of negativity? I mean, there's something out there that you've that you've really, really wanted, and someone's been really jealous. But you've gone out there and actually achieved it. And it's made you feel really good, almost like revenge. Have you ever felt like that? No, I never think about. I I never bother to look behind me. Mm. Um, negativity that's always out there. Yeah. Always, and I'm I'm one that's very sensitive to that, you know. And people take the quietness to, they misinterpret it for an attitude. It's not a matter of having an attitude. It's a matter of observing what's going 